Hi, this is Tom and welcome back to my personal channel where I talk about the tips and the tricks that I've picked up over 12 years of studying medicine and doing medical exams that can hopefully help you prepare a little bit better for your medical exams and take a bit of that stress away. In this video, I'm going to be talking about why it's so important to be tracking your learning in preparation for exams. And I'm going to put resources on the Zero to Finals website at zerodefinals.com slash tracking where you can find resources that will appear throughout this video, such as the tracking tables and also the blank calendars so that you can plan your revision strategy in your preparation for your exams. This video is sort of a follow on video from the video I did last week where I talked about testing. And if you haven't watched that video, I recommend going to have a look at that first because it features some important concepts that will appear here, such as the forgetting curve, the testing effect, why testing is so important, and also a concept called the testing sandwich, which is a formula I've used for years and years in order to really prepare my knowledge for exams. So this video is all about tracking your learning and how you can use tracking in order to really accelerate and improve the studying that you're doing in preparation for exams. So we're gonna talk about a few concepts and I'm gonna put them up here along with timestamps so that you can skip ahead to any sections that interest you the most or watch through the whole video because that will make the most sense. So we're gonna start by recapping briefly the forgetting curve and how that applies to tracking your learning. We're gonna talk about the testing effect and how that applies to tracking your learning. We're also gonna talk about the benefits of tracking your learning as well as how to build a tracking table and how to use that tracking table to organize your time and improve the way that you study in preparation for your exams. Let's briefly recap the concept of the forgetting curve. When you first learn something and you're trying to retain that information in your memory, within a couple of hours, you forget most of what you learnt. And then you continue to forget that information, but the rate at which you forget that information slows down. So you get an initial drop in what you remember, and then it gradually starts to plateau, let's say around 20%. When you repeatedly learn that information, the rate at which you forget it starts to decrease, meaning that every sequential time that you learn something, every repetition that you put in trying to learn something, you forget that more slowly. So that information stays with you longer. So repetitions of learning information is really key. There is a way to go one step further than this and retain information longer and have your memory of that information fall more slowly. And that's something called the testing effect. And this is where you test yourself on information and then that information is retained in your memory for longer, which is really useful in the lead up to exams. Testing yourself is also a really useful way to get feedback on how well your revision is going and how ready you are in preparation for your exams. And that leads us on to tracking and the importance of tracking your learning and tracking your test results in order to see where you're up to with your exams and also to plan your revision strategy so that you're absolutely prepared when the exam day comes around. Next, let's talk about the benefits of tracking your learning in preparation for exams. And the first benefit is that when you test yourself and you track the test that you're getting, you know where your weaknesses are and where your strengths are. And this allows you to know where to put the most time and revision in order to get the most benefit from your efforts. Secondly, it's quite good to see your progress over time. And this is really motivating because you're able to see this tracking table start to become more and more complete and see how much work you're doing and see your progress. In the same way that people get a satisfaction from seeing the set of notes they've created, if you're creating a tracking table and filling that in, you'll get a sense of satisfaction that you're actually making progress and you're doing something useful. Thirdly, it helps you to organize your revision in a dynamic way. So you can look at your tracking table, see where you're weak and where you need to put more effort in and adapt in real time in preparation for your exams so that you're being most efficient and optimizing your learning. And this is in contrast to planning your revision schedule up front and having a rigid plan that doesn't adapt to how you're developing. So it won't be as efficient and effective in preparing you for those exams. So let's talk about building a tracking table. And the first step in this process is to take your exam and to break it down into individual topics that you can study in between 30 minutes to two hours. And we're gonna apply something called the testing sandwich. And I've got a whole different video about testing, so it's probably worth having a look at that if you haven't done already. But this testing sandwich involves 
starting each study session with short answer questions, then studying your notes on the topic, and then doing some multiple choice questions afterwards. So you've broken down what's going to come up on the exam into different topics that you can study in 30 minutes to two hours. Now that you've got all the topics that you need to cover for your exams, you can start creating your tracking table. And you've got a few options with how you do this. You could hand draw the tracking table, or you could use a spreadsheet on a computer using numbers or Excel. And if you go to zerotofinals.com slash tracking, you can actually download a template um, that I've put together on tracking everything that you need to cover for medical school finals. On the left hand side of your tracking table, you have all the topics that you need to cover for your exams. Then I usually start out with three reviews, and these are three different columns that have one review each. And each review is a time where you sit down and you study that information, including doing the questions on that topic. So within each review, you have a section where you can put the date, then a section where you can put the pre-study question score. So this is the short answer question score. And then the final section is for the MCQ question score. And you can record all of this information each time you do a study session for that topic. Next, it's worth looking at how much time you have until your exam, or how much time you have in order to review all this material three times. So let's say your exam is four weeks away. So that's 28 days. And let's say you have 10 topics that you need to cover and you're gonna cover each topic three times. So that's 30 study sessions. So that's approximately one study session per day to cover everything three times before your exam. The next step is really just to get started. So let's say you're on day one and you decide to study cardiology and you're gonna implement the strategy that I call the testing sandwich. So you sit down and you do the short answer questions on cardiology. You find out what your mark is and you make a note of that in the tracking table. Next, you study through your cardiology notes and you go through trying to work out what you can remember and what you can't remember and what you need to pay most attention to. Then you move on to the MCQ questions. So you go through the MCQ questions on cardiology, find out your score and you track that in the tracking table as well. So then you're done with cardiology and if you're just doing one topic that day, you're done with that day's revision. So then on day two, you move on to endocrinology, on day three, you move on to respiratory and so on. Then after 10 days of doing this, you've covered all of the notes that you wanted to cover. And then you can look back at your tracking table and immediately see the areas where you're doing better and where your knowledge is good and the other areas where you really need to put more work in. So let's say it turns out you scored 75% on the questions on respiratory medicine, but you only scored 10% on the questions on renal medicine. Now you know that you can spend less time on respiratory because you're already doing quite well in that subject. And you need to spend more time on renal medicine and other subjects where you've done worse. So you can actually rank in this way which subjects you're best at and which subjects you're worst at and put it in order of priority of what you need to spend more time studying. So then on day 11, you spend your time studying renal medicine and you continue to track the results of the tests that you do on that subject. And then after that, you move on to the next most efficient area, for example, neurology. And you go through the neurology notes and do the neurology tests and track the neurology results in your tracking table. As you circle back around to topics that you did particularly well on, let's say you scored 75% on respiratory, start off with just doing the short answer questions. And if you score really well on those, you know your knowledge is still quite good. And you can move on to doing the MCQ questions, skipping the study block altogether. And if you score well on all the questions on that topic, you might want to skip studying it altogether for that time and not read through the notes. And you can use this time more effectively by studying one of the topics that you're worse at, for example, renal medicine. And this way, you know that your time is being used most efficiently. And you can set yourself a threshold. Let's say once you start scoring 80% on the questions on a topic, you don't need to revisit that topic to study again. And by the time the exam rolls around, you can just be testing yourself rather than re-studying that material, unless there's something you're still struggling with. And sometimes there's topics, for example, the Krebs cycle, that you need to revise the day before the exam or it will be forgotten. So you can still do that, 
But for the majority of stuff, you want to be at the point where you can just test yourself and walk into the exam and be ready to answer any questions. So I hope this video has been helpful in showing how you can use tracking to manage your time to be most efficient in preparation for your exams, so that on your exam day, you have the maximum amount of information retained, ready to put into action. You can find resources to help with tracking your exam preparation at zerodefinals.com slash tracking, and there's a link in the description below. And this includes A3 posters that you can order that have the tracking table and also a blank calendar so that you have everything you need in order to prepare your exam schedule and to track your learning in preparation for those exams. If you found this video helpful, I'd be really grateful if you could hit the like button and give the video a like because this helps the channel to grow. If you want to see more videos as they come out, then hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions or suggestions for me, then leave a comment down below. I read all the comments. And I'll see you in the next video.